priests at monasteries like this always had strong links to the church at Lalabella in Ethiopia. When the Christians here were in danger of being wiped out by the Muslim majority, the Ethiopians upriver threatened to block off the Nile, and the threat worked. This is how Christianity survived here for so long. Miriam told us how the pharaohs felt blessed by nature and God. The Nile was the perfect trade route. The trade winds carried the sailboats upriver, and then the river's flow brought them back down again. This turned the Nile into a river of gold. After more than three months on the river, we had our routine down cold. We stop, unpack the boat, make dinner, we condense up, eat, take a shower, go to sleep, wake up, pack the boats. It's every day, day after day, day after day, day after day. I first saw Luxor as a boy, yet after visiting the source of the Nile, all this looks different to me. For 3,000 years, Egypt was ruled by pharaohs like Ramses the Great and the female pharaoh Hatshepsut. The Nile turned them into living gods. No wonder they worshipped the river. It was 115 degrees when Miriam took us to the Valley of the Queens, where we visited the tomb of Queen Nefertari, the favorite wife of Ramses the Great. At the tomb of the pharaoh Tutmosis III, I told my friends how the Nile was revered as a passageway into both life and death. And for me too, this has been more than a river trip. It was like a, an inner voyage. It did change me. Reaching Cairo was a milestone. After months of sand dunes and mud huts, the city dazzles me like some fabulous mirage. With the Nile as their power base, the pharaohs ruled for 3,000 years. Their dynasties are long gone, but the river's spiritual power remains. I think that I've gained something spiritually from this trip. Sharing this expedition with Pasquale has let's shown me that really anything is possible if your heart's in it. After four long, grueling months and 3,000 miles, we finally made it to the Mediterranean. I can't believe it. We're the first people in history to go all the way from source to sea on the Blue Nile. As we finally hit the surf and the salt water, I, I was flooded with exhaustion and pride and just overwhelming joy. The river connects people. The lucky necklace from a Christian girl in Ethiopia brought me new friends all along the Nile. times that meant the most to me are the simple everyday encounters with people along the river. You know, Gordon and I had some real rough spots along the way, but he came through and the chips were down and I needed and he saved my life more than once. We've all got infinite respect now for this river. You know, we realized that when we finally stepped on the beaches of Alexandria, our final destination.
I was so proud of taking part in this expedition. I went right away to visit my grandfather. As a farmer, he treasured the vial of holy water I brought him from the source. A Muslim girl in Alexandria admired my necklace. What luck. People of many cultures share the river. A lot of them in conflict, but um, most of them in harmony. Our friends in Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt follow different religions. Yet they all draw spiritual sustenance from the river. The Nile has brought such wealth and power that many have tried to own it. But the river has defied even the mightiest pharaohs because it's greater than all of us. The waters of the Nile bring life and nourish the soul. Yeah, good. 